תהיה. תדפיק ברכה והצלחה, בסייעתא דשמיא גדולה, מה כדאי עמוד וחתם מזה כאתם, ובעזרת השם בזכות עוד צדיקים מהקדוש ברוך הוא בעת השם. Hear all our prayers and we will all that Hashem have the merit to taste the taste of redemption. Amen. כן יראה שם דרך השם. מילה רבותי ברוך השם, today we sat sandak and באמת we prayed for all our community and our community בעת השם will gather only with happy things, only with ברכות, only with שפע. ברוך השם, בלי נערה it's been like that so far. ברוך השם, we have a community that there was no bad news. Except for Baruch Hashem, the very uh, uh, exciting Shabbatot that we have. There's no bad news that came out of Baruch Hashem, our group, and that will continue Baruch Hashem for many, many more years to come and only grow spiritually, physically, with all the redemptions. Amen. We also pray for Baruch Hashem that the women's section will be equal to the men's section. Meaning that what? That every person that will come, all the young and the single, will bring Baruch Hashem their wives very, very soon. Amen. And Baruch Hashem, the we're going to have to uh, get a building that has half-half. <laughs> like that, Be'ezat Hashem will be able to accommodate all the, the pairs and all the young boys and young girls that come here will no longer come in as in singles, will come in as pairs. I mean, Kenyat of Be'ezat Hashem. You know, but I, today we're thinking about Baruch Hashem, the beautiful month of Nisan that we are all approaching to. Now, you know, but I, what Chazal teaches us, the month of Nisan is one of the most important months in the entire year. First of all, being the first month of the year, where it's really the first count, where whenever we count the first month, it's not Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah in Tishrei is actually the seventh month, and Nisan is the first month. So really, when we enter into this timing of Nisan, it's the beginning of a year, it's the beginning of a big chapter within our lives. Now we know what I, what Chazal is saying, that the month of Nisan is actually a month of what? The month of Geulah. That is the month that Bnei Yisrael were redeemed at the time from Egypt, and will be the month that Be'ezrat Hashem, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, will redeem us from all our troubles, from all our sufferings, and will bring us Be'ezrat Hashem to a perfect world at the time of the full redemption. Mashiach Tzitkenu Amen Kinyat Zom Be'ezrat Hashem. But you know, Abutai, to every single month, always before Rosh Chodesh, we try to understand the month and maybe try to understand how to act within that month. Every month has a completely different character. And different mazal and different traits and if we understand the month and understand its traits it will help us a lot in order to absorb and to use all its traits for our benefit so now about the month of nisan arizad brings that every single month has a pewula as an action meaning that every month has an action that really is attached to that month arizad says that the month of nisan is what what does that mean in translation so the month of Nisan has the quach, the strength of words. Well, when we talk in the month of Nisan, our words are powerful. Our words are the strongest act that we can do in the month of Nisan. And this is where we even get the concept of what holiday do we celebrate in Nisan? Pesach. Pesach, Pesach comes from what word? Arigal says Pesach. What does that mean? A mouth talks. If you take the word Pesach and you split it, that is what is left. We're in the month of Nisan, the holiday of redemption, the bracha that comes down to the world, is all done by the Pesach, the mouth that talks. In this month, when we, if we talk to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if we pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we have the ability and we have the uh, opportunity to completely change our lives. <coughs> but now, but I, there is something that we always come to with regards to this concept of praying and talking to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which we think is something that we think about a lot. You know, but when we look at tzaddikim and we see these holy men that were able to talk and to ask Makadosh Baruch and to bring those prayers to a materialization, it's something that is actually something very big. And something that we all, to a certain point, pray and hope that we will reach to that level of having say that our words will not just be words, our words will turn into actions, our, our words will turn into changes. Nobody here does not want his tefillot, his prayers, his uh, uh, requests to have big effect in Olam HaTelunim up there. But the real question is, and especially approaching the month of Nisan, how can we cause our tefillot? How do we make our voice loud? How do we make our ratzon, our will loud? How do we make our conversation with HaKadosh Baruch Hu actually reach HaKadosh Baruch Hu and make some sort of difference that actually counts? And not just another tefillah that we, that we pray and we don't necessarily 
taste the change within our, our hands. So now, but I, in order to try to come to this understanding, we have to look always at what HaKadosh Baruch Hu puts in front of us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu orders everything in a very unique manner. He puts everything perfectly, precisely in place in order to position us in the best manner to achieve all what we're supposed to achieve. We know about time, but in this week's upcoming parasha, we actually read what? We actually read two parashot. Which parashot are they? Vayakel and Pekudei. These two parashot talk about what? Talk about the building of the Mishkan. More specifically, I would like to understand how the Torah consecutively puts things in order. We know in last week's parasha, Bnei Israel committed the worst sin possible. What sin was it? The golden calf. The sin that brought the world back to its place of destruction, even worse than it was before, after the sin of Adam Arishon, where the world returned back to its complete chaos manner. Right after this sin, right after all the sparks of Kedusha were returned back to the evil inclination, and we were sent to another thousand, another round of thousands of years of exile, HaKadosh Baruch Hu starts to prepare and starts to position B'nai Israel for a reparation. How does he do so? He does so with the beginning of the first parasha that we read, parasha Vayakim. What is the first two psukim of parasha Vayakim? So it's something very strange. Right after parasha Vayakim, Moshe Rabbeinu, like the word Vayakim, gathers all Bnei Israel and tells them HaKadosh Baruch has a request for them. What's this request? Sheshet yamim ta'asim melacha v'yom ha'shvi'i shabbaton la'ashim Six days, do your work, do your job. On the seventh day, what is it? Shabbat Shabbat Unlash. It's a Shabbat. You have to completely rest on this day. This is one of the times that we have this concept of the mitzvah of keeping the Shabbat. One pasuk right afterwards, the talk continues like it's the same, like it's the same subject. It says, Moshe Rabbeinu announces to Bnei Israel, everyone that has a wide heart and everyone that is generous and wants to give, Bring forward gold, silver, all these expensive materials, leathers, etc. In order to build the Mishkan. And Moshe closes off these two psukim that have no connection one to the other. With the call, all the person, any person that wachochma shorat bo. Any person that he has a real presence of intelligence and of chokhma, it's like higher than intelligence. Will complete these two things properly. So now, but I, when we look at these two psukim, and especially if you connect the first pasuk to the next two parashot, that we're actually reading together as one parasha, there is no sense of Why, right after the sin of the golden calf, I understand that HaKadosh Baruch Hu would enter into the mitzvah of building of the Mishkan, which as we know, Bnei Yisrael dirtied their heart, so now Hashem needed a home to rest within. What is this concept of putting in Shabbat as essentially one package? And what is the connection between Shabbat and building of Mishkan? And why were these two things the first thing that Moshe Rabbeinu directed Bnei Israel right after the sin of the golden calf? So when we came to this thought, we thought of a beautiful teaching that was actually taught in last week's Pasha. And that was moments before the sin of the golden calf. It says about time that when Bnei Yisrael sit in the golden calf, where was Moshe Rabbeinu? He was in Shamayim, where he ascended for 40 days and 40 nights to prepare not only the world, but to prepare himself, to prepare Am Yisrael, to bring down the Torah. While Moshe Rabbeinu is still above in Olamot Eidonim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu calls Moshe. What did he tell Moshe? Lech red minar ki shichet amecha. Tells Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, you have to right away descend from where you are here in the higher world, in Olam Oteidunim. Return back to your world. Why? Because Bnei Yisrael sinned. And we see, what is the first thing that Moshe Rabbeinu does? He starts to argue. He says, Hashem, don't worry. Please forgive them. I will go down. I will convince them, I will make them do Teshuvah, I will spread your name, I will make you into a Goy Gadol. And he continues to pray and to ask from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, essentially, 
a repentance and forgiveness for Amistad. So this brought us to two questions that we came up with that we didn't understand. Akadosh Baruch Hu is asking something from Moshe Rabbeinu. He's saying, Moshe Rabbeinu, go down. First of all, why does Akadosh Baruch Hu need to even explain why he's asking what he's asking? Throughout the Torah, we have so many mitzvot, almost, we can say, almost all the mitzvot, we are asked. We don't have an explanation why Hashem asks us. Hashem says, you keep Shabbat, we keep Shabbat. Don't, uh, don't mix milk and meat, we don't mix milk and meat. Don't steal, we don't steal. There is no explanation that follows. And this is regards to even mitzvot that are brought with Rabbanan. Where there are even mitzvot that Rabbanan our sages put in place. We don't ask, we don't try to understand, we respect the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the path that Chazal put in front of us. And we follow without necessarily trying to understand. Why is it that Moshe Rabbeinu from the first place needed an explanation from HaKadosh Baruch Hu why he should go down? Tell him go and zero. But even worse than that, we see Moshe Rabbeinu after he's asked a request from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, what does he do? He starts to argue. Instead of writing right, right away, running to be zrizim, we say that in the halacha, um, a adam tzichot zariz, the kaim mitzvot, a person needs to be swift to accomplish mitzvot. Akadosh Baruch Hu, face to face, panim ut panim, k'ishel re'u. Moshe Rabbeinu is hearing a request from Akadosh Baruch Hu, and instead of accomplishing it, what does he do? He takes his time. Arguing with Hashem, telling Hashem, forgive B'nai Yisrael, I'm going to go down, but before I go down, you have to promise me that you don't destroy Am Yisrael. After you will forgive them, I will descend. What is this concept of Moshe Rabbeinu? It's just like chutzpah. To argue and to pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu asked him to descend. So now, but in order to understand these two questions, we have to understand how HaKadosh Baruch Hu organized our world. We now, but we say what Chazal teaches us, Hashemayim, Shamaim Lehashem Ve'aretz Natani Vnei Adam What does that mean in translation? It means in translation Shamaim Shamaim Lehashem The sky Olamot Elyonim It belongs to who? It belongs to HaKadosh Baruch He occupies it It is his home He is the only entity that leads it There is no other freedom HaKadosh Baruch Hu's resting place and all what happens within it is completely under Akadosh Baruch Hu's reach and under Akadosh Baruch Hu's control. To the point where even other forms of life in Olamot Eidionim don't have a sense of leadership that we have. Where all Malachi Sharet, all the Kovim, the Seraphim, which are essentially forms of life in the higher worlds, they don't have a say. They, they don't consider their world to be a home. Why? Because Akadosh Baruch Hu occupies all the space. It is his, and he leads it in his method. That is Shamaim Shamaim Lashem. That is the sky that HaKadosh Baruch Hu built. It comes in the form of the three or four worlds, you can call it, of Atzilut, Beria, Yetzirah, and Asiya, the spiritual, al Deela, the higher version of, of Asiya. Ve'aretz, Natan Ibn Adam. And the earth, what did HaKadosh Baruch Hu do? He gave it to the world. We told Ibn Adam, he told man, earth is your home. You control it, you lead it, you have freedom of will. No other creation was given that this concept of complete control, like man was. Earth, call it your home. Now, as we know, even within our world, we have a freedom and ability of leading. We have the choice to do good deeds, and we could essentially gather merit, that when we will go up to Hashem's world, we could be gifted big merits and big gifts for it, or chas shalom. If we take our freedom and our will that HaKadosh Baruch gave us in our world, and we do it, we act wrongly, when we will go up to Hashem's world, He'll say, you took the wrong choices. You're in my house now. You're under my control now. There is maybe a consequences to a person's deeds. Both entities, HaKadosh Baruch Hu in Hashemayim, His world, and man in our world, have of Achiza. They have strength of grasp like Baal Abayt. Like the owner of a house. Like a resident of a place that a person lives with. As we know, it says in Bachot in page 
that Baalabait, one who resides in a specific home, he has all control. Now, this control goes further than just control of what happens. This control even goes as far as being a spiritual control. Where could we see this concept? <clears throat> we started to learn Alachot Pesach, like we said in Megillah, 30 days before Pesach, we start to learn Alachot Pesach. One of the very interesting Alachot Pesach that we learn is that if a person comes down to a person's home, and in that person's home, there is a specific custom, there is a specific uh, 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 food that they eat and food that they don't eat. When you go into that home, what happens right away? The rule of the home applies to you. Now what's incredible is that Pesach is Midaoraita. Pesach is Karet. If Chaz Shalom, your custom, considers a certain thing to be safik, Chametz, a doubt of Chametz, that's a big deal. But you go to somebody else's house, Baalabait of somebody else's home, and his custom is differently, you follow his custom. That is how, has, how far the Achiza, the grasp of a Baal Abayt, a owner of a house, holds within his home. This, like, we, like we just mentioned, has a big uh, spiritual consequences as well. We said, maybe we can say something in a manner like this. When B'nai Israel sinned with the golden calf, Moshe Rabbeinu was where? He was in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's home. He was in Olamot Ha'elyonim, where he was considered to be what? A guest in the domain of Kutcha Berichu. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw that B'nai Israel sinned with the golden calf, HaKadosh Baruch Hu right away started to put things into place. Where he saw that the only one that will have the strength, the kwach, to pray for the forgiveness of B'nai Israel will be who? Moshe Rabbeinu. But the problem is that where was Moshe? Moshe was in the home of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And as long as Moshe is not in his home, meaning our world, the bottom world, he does not have grasp as Baal Abayt. Especially at that time, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu knew that Olam Oteilunim, they were full of anger. Where the entire world of above were completely full of judgment at that time. B'nai Yisrael sinned, they brought a damaging once again to all four worlds. The attribute that HaKadosh Baruch was leading up there was what? Complete judgment. So Hashem said, how will Moshe ask for B'nai Yisrael forgiveness when he's not in a place where he has grasped like he owns the place? Where he has grasped like a Baal Abayt, Where he has saved? So HaKadosh Baruch told Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, right away, Run down. Why? Because up here there's a lot of anger. It's like maybe we can give an analogy. It's like when you go to somebody's home and the owner of the house is screaming. He's very upset. If you like it or if you don't, what's going to happen? You're going to feel that anger. You're going to be very uncomfortable. And you won't be comfortable to settle in or to reside there. Why? Because there's anger. That's what happened with HaKadosh Baruch. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Benu. You want to ask for forgiveness for Nesai? Please descend right away. When you're down there, because B'nai Israel sinned, you will have the strength and the achizad, the grasp that is necessary to pray and for your words to have action. But to our surprise, what does Moshe Rabbeinu do? He doesn't descend. He stands there in Olamot Elyonim and he starts to ask and he starts to pray for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to forgive B'nai Israel for their sin. What happened to what we just mentioned here? What happened to the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu was a guest up there in Alamot Eilioni? So now, Bertai, we're thinking about something, of this concept of being a Baalabait. What is being a Baalabait? Being an owner of a place or having um, a grasp of a certain place. What gives it to a person? What makes a person considered to be his home, his place, his grasp, he's the Baalabite, he's the owner of the home. You know, can somebody answer? 
No. His presence there? No. It's pre your presence everywhere you go. So it's not what, it's not the presence that makes him Baalabay. What gives the person the grasp that it's his home? Ownership. Ownership paid for it. So in other words, he is treating that place like what? Like it's his home. If he doesn't pay for the walls to stand, they will fall. If he doesn't pay the electricity, there will not be electricity. If he doesn't up, keep it and up, um, uh, maintain it, it will fall apart. The fact that he is there and the, that what that is the cause of keeping everything in peace and keeping everything intact makes him what? Makes him have grasp on a place. With a place that you can come and you can take care of and you manage and you glorify, it naturally becomes your place like you have gratitude with him. Maybe we can give an analogy. It's like you go to a forest. It's emptiness, just a forest. Does anybody control it? Does anybody own it? Nobody. Build a home, take care of it, upkeep it. Suddenly what happens? You have your residence. You can even maybe make it into a city one day, make it into a country. The fact that a person uptakes and keeps and maintains a place gives him the achiza and gives them the right to have say within. We were thinking, maybe we can say something like this. Moshe Rabbeinu, when he was told from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, descend, because only down there you have say like an ownership. Moshe Rabbeinu was not afraid. Why was he not afraid? Because Moshe knew that even in al Ilyonim, he maintained it and he took care of it and he treated it like what? Treated it like it's his home. And the fact that he knew that he took care of the Olam Olamote Elunim to such a level, he had no fear of not having grasp. Because he knew he held the grasp. And this Rabotai is something very, very important that we can know. Moshe Rabbeinu's koach, his strength, came from one point, from one reason. It came from the fact that he was able to make the home of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Olamote Elunim, have the exact same level, the exact same place, like our world, like down here, our home. So the question that we can all come to is no. Moshe Rabbeinu was there for 40 days and 40 nights. I understand why he was comfortable. <coughs> Any place you go for 40 days and 40 nights, you get very comfortable. People, they go to one night, two nights to an Achsanya, uh, a hotel, and he's already very comfortable. 40 days and 40 nights, it's clear. Anybody would be comfortable up there and to make it into their home if they were there for 40 nights, 40 nights. So no. How can each and every one of us have that grasp and have to say like we are Baal Abayt, the owner of Olamo Teilunim? So, maybe we can explain it in a manner like this. <coughs> a few weeks ago in the Torah, we read the request from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, where it says, V'banu li mishkan ve'shachanti betocha. What does that mean? HaKadosh Baruch Hu asked from Bnei Yisrael, Build me a home, and I will rest in it. In other words, in this two weeks of Parashat, it's what? The Mishkan itself. Where the Mishkan had the, the uh, uh, um, same entitlement as the home of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Why is that? So the Zohar HaKadosh is something like this. As we know about time, before HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, he had something that he was keeping in his safe for thousands of years which was his gem of all gems. What was that? The Torah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu took that Torah and he decided to give it as a gift to who? To Am Yisrael. The Zohar HaKadosh gives an analogy of what it was like for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to give his precious prized possession as the Torah to all about the Tachtonim, to the bottom world of the physicality. So how can you say, it's like one time, there was a king that for many years he tried to bring kids. After many years of trying, HaKadosh Baruch Hu blessed him with one daughter. And this daughter was, was his prized possession. Anyone that looked at his daughter in a wrong way, he would uh, make them disappear. This daughter was, all his life was leading up to this daughter. Like every person, when they come to the, a certain age, 
What needs to happen? You need to get married. But the king had a lot of pain and a lot of sadness to a certain degree. That he needed to take his prized possession and to give it to live in somebody else's home. To put it under somebody else's grasp. So what did the king that loves his daughter so much do? He came to his son-in-law. Muzawar Qadr said, he told his son-in-law, look, my daughter, you have to be very careful with her. Keep her well. Because all my life I waited to have this prized possession. Please take care of her better than me. But I have one more request. When you build your palace of your own, build me a small room. That, that room will be mine. In order, so every so often, I will be able to come, stay in my room, and be close to my daughter. And as long as I have that room, I'll be happy and I'll be calm. The fact that I'm sending my daughter far, far away under somebody else's uh, uh, responsibility, under somebody else's grasp. That's what Akadosh says. That's what Akadosh Baruch Hu did. How did Akadosh Baruch Hu do so? He did so with Bate Midrashot and Bate Knisiot. Where Kadosh Baruch Hu sent this Torah to the world, gave his prized possession to somebody else's home, but he asked for one request. Build me a small room where I can rest in it like it is my own home. Maybe we can come and maybe we can see. How could a person come to that place of becoming a residence, of becoming a Baal Abayt, even in the world above? Very simple. If you can make Akadosh Baruch Hu's home, your home, down here, it's going to end up that what's going to happen, even up there, Akadosh Baruch Hu's home, will be considered to be what? Like your home. Like you are the king. Like it is your residence that when you talk, your words come into consideration. Where every single person that lives in a home, his will, is put into account with everybody else as well. How is that done? It's done only when a person makes Hashem's home his home. And maybe we can say, that's why we read every single day, Hashrei Yoshvei Betecha. What does that mean? Merit to those, praise those who what? Who sit in your home. Why praise those who sit in your home? What's so big in sitting in Hashem's home? Because those who sit in Akadosh Baruch Hu's home are able to make Akadosh Baruch Hu's domain into their own. And that deserves big praise. Because in our Lama and down here, his request, his will, it's looked at. It's not just put aside. It's thought of. It's put into consideration. And not about that, it's one of the secrets that every person needs to essentially even hold and think about. When you come to a Bet Knesset, it's not just coming to a Bet Knesset to pray. It's really a Kaddish Baku's home. And if we're able to make Hashem's home by making sure it's clean and taking care of it like it's our own home, the bacha that we achieve, that we could bring down to our lives from it is, is endless. We don't even understand. We know that in places it's written about Akadosh Baruch Hu praises those who sit in the house of Akadosh Baruch Hu. But we don't truly understand to what level. Only with this simple teaching that we just mentioned now, we come to some sort of grasp on how much koach and how much bacha the person gets just by making Akadosh Baruch Hu's home a shul, a bit nest into his home. And that's something that we have to value with great value. But there is another way that a person can make a Kadush Baruch's home into his own home within our world. How, how we do so? The Zohar Kadush says, and this is really all Chazal explained, that a Kadush Baruch when he created the world, he created six days. Six days were given to whom? Given to everyone else to eat. Why Hashem said, all the six days, what name do they have? Oh. Chol. They are simple. They are empty. All living entities, fill it up. Do something with it. But, But, <laughs> וישבות ביום השביעי מכל מלאכתו אשר עשה ויברך אלוהים את יום השביעי ויקדש אותו כי בו שבת מכל מלאכתו. מה זה אומר? הקדוש ברוך הוא גאט של הסבן הזה? הוא אמר לא, לא, לא. זה דבר שלי. 
We took the seventh day, they kadesh it. He glorified it. He made it holy. Where the concept of Shabbat is a day that belongs to who? To HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Where all living beings in our world no longer have this concept of grasp like it is our world. And that's what the Zohar HaKadosh says in Parashat Bereshit. Says, Every Friday, what really happens to our world? Very simple. HaKadosh Baruch Hu's spiritual world, meaning up there, Hashem's home, comes down and completely starts to take over our world. Where the Zohar HaKadosh says, Hashchina purasat et kanfea, the, the Shechina opens its wings and starts to slowly by slowly cover all the world with the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, or in other words, making our world into what? Into Hashem's world. And that's what we say, Vayfros sukat shalom aleinu ba'al kol b'nei Yisrael. On Friday, what do we say? HaKadosh Baruch Hu pores sukat shalom. What does that mean in translation? Lifros, it's like when you take a tablecloth and you do like this, and you completely cover a table, that is the word lifros. Every single Friday, HaKadosh Baruch Hu pores et sukat shalom. He covers our world with peace. What is the peace that we say Shabbat shalom? HaKadosh Baruch Hu's strength and HaKadosh Baruch Hu's kingdom. In other words, what's the sphere of the day of Shabbat? Malchut, kingdomship. Whose kingdomships? Hashem. Where the day of Shabbat, we no longer have control and say, and this concept of being owners within our world. Haaretz, Haaretz, Libne Adam, not on Shabbat. Now this is actually a concept that is not only applicable within our world, but something that actually happens in all the worlds. We now have to die there's one place in Lamot HaYilunim where Kadosh Baruch Hu kind of gave it to somebody else to lead. He, he let some other leader take control of it. What is that? Gehenam. Achamana Litzlan. Hashem Yerachem. In English we say hell. Hashem Yerachem. Or in our language we could say Los Angeles. Zohar Kadosh said that there's three angels that Kadosh Baruch Hu gave control to. What are these three angels? One of them is called Af, one of them is called Sheol, and one of them is called Chima. These are three angels that are called Malche Chabala, that they, six days in a week, stand in Gehenna, and they punish all those who deserve punishment, and they hold control and uh, uh, grasp with, within all those people that are sitting in all the seven levels of Gehenna. Zohar Kadosh goes into a whole teaching of the whole week, the screams that all those who sit in Genom, they scream because of these three angels. Erev Shabbat comes. Zohar Kadosh says, Hashem sends three kolot, three voices. What are these three voices? Three announcements that are what? That are Havaya, Yud K, Vav K. And those voices go to Gehenam. And right away, those three angels, Af, uh, Sheol, and Chema, lift their hands and no longer have control. So the Zohar Kadosh even gives an analogy on what it's like. So it's like if you have a policeman beating up a criminal. And suddenly, the king walks in. Is he going to continue to beat up the criminal? No, out of respect of the king, he's going to lift his hand and say, the king is here, I'm not going to show strength, I cannot lead. When the king is here, when the king enters the room, all leadership gets turned to him. As well, said, that's what happens on Shabbat. Shabbat, all leadership that exists in our world, in the world above, in any world that exists, all gets turned over to Akadosh Baruch. And all the worlds become what? Become Akadosh Baruch's home that he rests within. And this is the concept. We say that the person that keeps us the Shabbat, Elish Merini, you keep the Shabbat, you make the Shabbat like it is your home, what happens to you? You get grasped that even on Alamot Elyonim, the Shabbat will protect you. In what manner? That you will have, say, a Baalabait, even up there. And this Rabbi gives us a little bit of 
the importance and the koach that we can do when we really take the Shabbat and act with it properly. Where we can come to a place of, of leadership in our Lamot HaEdonim. Or even up there we'll have a say, we'll have a voice. Our opinions will, be, will, 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 will count. We'll have some importance. That comes how? It comes when a person keeps the Shabbat and when a person makes Hashem's day into what? Into our day. And Sabbatai is a big secret. Maybe we'll get into it one day in length in the Shul Torah because it does not justify it just explaining it the way we explain it. Maybe we can say that this is why Akadosh Baruch Hu, right after the sin of the golden calf, asked for two requests. Two mitzvot. That these two mitzvot are the first six psukim in our parasha. The first pasuk is what? Shabbat. And the second pasuk is what? Build a home for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it ends off with only the one that really has chokhmah. The one that has true chokhmah will be able to accomplish it. And we're able to do it to a completion. Why is that? Maybe we can say HaKadosh Baruch Hu knew something very simple. He knew that B'nai Israel with the sin of the golden calf caused big damage. But they caused big damage where? In HaKadosh Baruch Hu's home. Where they brought to Olamot Eidionim a damage which till today we're trying to fix. Because clearly if we were done and if we were to fix it, our world will return to its place and we would have a Geula. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knew that the only way B'nai Israel will be able to be forgiven for the sin of the golden calf is if one thing happens. If they grab a grasp of his world like it is theirs. And that is why HaKadosh Baruch Hu opened up right after the sin of the golden calf with two requests. First of all, keep the Shabbat. Make the Shabbat into your day. And build me a home. Take care of that home with great generosity. And as a result of that, that person that does so and is able to come to this conclusion is the real smart man. Why? Because that is the person that is able to grab, grasp in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's world and have say in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's world like it is his own world. And this Abotai is actually a big secret. If we want our prayers to have strength, if we want our requests to be accepted, if we want our opinion to be thought of and not just not valued, we need to make our presence in our Lamot Eidonim strong. And these two mitzvot are very simple. The mitzvot that we're doing right now, first of all, one of them. And then mitzvot that we already do on Shabbat. But we have to have our intention, we have to have um, our actions put in the right place. And this Abotai is actually a secret that actually expands above these two mitzvot and enters into almost every single day of a person's life. In what manner? Very simply. You know Abotai, a lot of the times, a person lives in this world and he gets used to this world and he gets attached to this world and he comes to this thought of blur we see this world as what? As his home. As life. As the journey that you are going to live. And then there's an end of the journey. But if we come to that conclusion, that we're only building our world, and only trying to achieve in our world, only trying to be comfortable in our world, because this is our world, this is our journey, then how do we expect up there for us, for them to value our opinion, to value our prayer, and we're not even valuing that entire world that is the everlasting world. A person wants to be like the tzaddikim, where it says, Retzon yireav, yes. the will of the tzaddikim, Akadosh Baruch does, it's very simple. We need to make that world our world. How? Very simple. You know, Abutai, every single day, a person goes to the Abodah. He goes to work, why? To take care of his home to bring panasa, to bring um, uh, money to be able to buy new furniture, to buy food, to buy beautiful clothing, to take care of where he lives, of his place. If a person is able to make this world as a step of a preparation for the world to come, with the mitzvot that he does, he says, I'm doing the mitzvot for the world to come. I'm not doing it for now. A person that does so, it is clear that if you're building your home from now, but in the world above, 
then you will have safe from now in the world above. If you prepare your place and where you will rest in the world above, while you're still in this world, where it's not just working to make yourself comfortable here, but all a preparation for the home to come, and ulamot ilonim. Then, when will you when you will have your tefillah and when you will have your bakasha, you will have a grasp. Why? Because you live in both places. And that's about that is something that we all need to really install in our life. This world of Abotai is a passage, a hallway. This hallway is meant for us to prepare ourselves to collect what is necessary in order to get to our final destination. The closer we bring our destination in the manner that we make our destination a part of the journey, when we will reach our destination, even before so, everything will be set for us. Everything will be prepared for us. The problem starts when we completely make the destination as something that is not inevitable and something that we're not going to need to rest with him. And this is what Abu we should all try to take upon ourselves, especially in the, in the month before Elul. Make this world into the world to come. Make every available moment that the person has as a moment that he can put another brick in his home in al And if he will do so, Be'ezat Hashem in the month of Nisan, where the strength will be given to our tongue to speak, our words will have great value, our tefillah will go far, and our will will be accepted by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Amen. Bless all of us and give us inspiration, give us the kwach to turn our world into the world to come, and as a result of that, all our prayers will be accepted. Is there any questions, Sadiqim? Hmm.